Oh, testing, testing. Um, I think we're live. Hey, uh, thanks, Rudy fella. How you doing? Right, all system go. Can go ahead and get started. Um, all right, cool. Welcome everyone. So um, today it's it's been a while. <laughs> it's been a while since the last uh, since the last stream, and just because I've been I've been working on the or I, I actually I was being part of the uh, creature workshop, working on uh, some awesome creature concepts for the past week. So that's why we haven't um, caught up for a while. But today, what I thought we could do is just keep working on this idea of the of the combo of the fast food combo. Um, it might not be your cup of tea as in the type of design or the type of thing that you want to do, but um, these type of little things and, and small projects uh, are, are really good to sort of like get used to certain tools. And we did a lot of, uh, you know, a vari you know, variety of tools uh, from NanoMesh to uh, dy um, Dynamics, uh, CModeler, that sort of thing. So I reckon we can just continue with something else uh, related so we can make some fries and um, maybe make like, like a soda or something like that. Uh, you know, again, just to, to practice some of the the tools in ZBrush as well as you know me giving you some more, the, uh, more tips um, and workflows to create whatever you want. But um, I think as an example, I think this one works um, quite well. So this is something that we did last, uh, last time that we caught up online uh, with ZBrush Live, just a, a burger. <laughs> And yeah, we, we went through the, the whole process of poly painting and uh, most of these things, I created them to to play around with dynamics, which was pretty fun. Uh, so yeah, we can do something similar. Uh, something else that I, I should mention as well, that is, uh, I, I might not be using it today, but um, I'm, I'm using the 3D mouse, the 3D space mouse. It's pretty cool. Um, so this is, this is me moving around, you know, without, the other hand <laughs> so it's a it's a little bit weird at first to have two mouses but um once you get used to it, it's like holding something like the, a 3d object in your hand you can just pull it up or down or push it out like so so it becomes quite intuitive once you get the hang of it uh, and i'm gonna be doing some kind of like walkthrough of how i'm being or how i learn how to use it it's, there's not much of a learning curve but um, how I'm using it, how I'm mapping it, because I I map that uh, 3D mouse to the whole, um, you know, to, to most of the software that I use that are in 3D. So in ZBrush, for example, I can just go ahead and click on that and bring my palettes. And that's all from the, all of these palettes are from the um, uh, the 3D mouse. And again, you can use, you can map everything that you want. But um, yeah, I thought I'd, I'd mention it because it's, it's actually pretty cool and ZBrush, supports it and you know th there's no it's it's pretty smooth really so once you install it and get used to the the movement and and how to handle it it's like really really useful um anyway i'm not going to be using that or i might but um let's go ahead and get started with something fun um i reckon we can start with the with the fries and obviously if you have if you guys have any questions feel free to put them in the chat all means um, I'll be looking at it. I have it here on my second screen, and yeah, we can go ahead and get started. So, um, all right. So let's do the. I reckon the the soda like yeah, the soda would be a good starting point. So of course I'm going to start with a cylinder, and I'm going to convert that into a polymesh 3D. Turn on polyframe. Um, and let's go ahead and establish the the shape, kind of like the blocking, the block out of the of the of the soda. I'm gonna make like a large soda, something like that, right? So that that will be the the height of it. Um, but of course, it has a little bit of taper, so it's not a a, a tube. So we can use the deformers here. I'm gonna click on the gear icon, and I'm gonna use the taper deformer. So this is the one that allows you to do this type of thing. So I'm gonna sort of establish the, like how thick, or not how thick, how how big the top part is. And then I'm gonna adjust this sort of curvature because obviously 
unless you're gonna do something more cartoonish and stylized uh, this is not what I'm going for so something like that should be fine and you have this um, this cone here or this controller that allows you to uh, modify that curve right so if you push that all the way up it's just gonna have like a very um, very steep curve and this is actually is um, let me just bring in my epic pen because this one is pretty cool all right so um, I'm sure you've seen some of the things that ZBrush uses in terms of profiles for example uh, in masking like if you open up this cavity mask you have these curvatures um, called these profile curves that allow you to control certain things or the influence of certain things so this cone uh, for this specific purpose works in a very similar way so you imagine that you have um, let's say um, you know what I'm gonna exaggerate it so that it is pretty clear what I'm doing something like that so let's imagine that this bit that I'm highlighting here right it's equivalent to this profile curve, right? And using this little controller, you can tweak the profile of that curve. So that curve would be that one. Um, and by the way, this has nothing to do with the masking. It's just to just show you a little bit of um, how the behind the scenes or, some, or something like that. Right, so this is kind of like the curve that you have. But then you can go ahead and you know move this uh, in or out, right? And if you take that controller, you can change that curvature like that. So in other words, what you're doing really is flattening that curve a little bit. So now you have a curve that goes more like that, right? So hopefully that makes sense. But it's a it's a good idea to have a, a an understanding of how these controllers work, so that you can manipulate them and do whatever you want. So yeah, so I'm gonna take that one, push it all the way down so that you have a pretty straight curve or a profile that is pretty straight. Um, like you would have maybe something like that. That's kind of like what I have here. And then I can control how much I wanna add. I know this is pretty basic, um, you know, but this when, when you're blocking something out and you're using the, the deformers, uh, this is super handy. All right, so that's, that's it. I'm gonna click on the gear icon, click on Accept, and there we go. That's the that's the basics of it. Maybe a little bit um, higher. Alrighty. So the the next thing that I want to do, obviously, is the maybe the lid. But we're going to be using um, a, a lot of this base mesh or this uh, block out of the mesh to extract things, right? So or not to extract, but like to um, yeah to reutilize what we already have. So in other words, this is not just the the blocking of something is also a volume that we can that we can utilize to change things and to create new stuff. So it could be just a matter of deleting things, duplicating that sort of thing. Uh, but I'm gonna use the C modeler, and what I'll do is you can go ahead and um, hold the Alt key and tag all of these polygons like that, right? And if you have something that has multiple loops within it. You could also activate symmetry, radial symmetry. Um, this is like the default cylinder, so it should have 32, um, yeah, 32 uh, polygons. So because I haven't altered the the original uh, primitive, so I just literally went in here and clicked on cylinder 3D without tweaking any of the primitive settings. It should have 32. So quite easily you can just select the Z axis because obviously, if you look at it. Um, well, you won't be able to see it, um, but you will be, not the z-axis, sorry, the y-axis that goes up. <laughs> so uh, the green line, right? And we set the radial count to 32. Uh, by the way, all of these controllers that I'm using here are on the transform palette, they're right here. So in case you have like multiple um, loops, this one allows you to select things in one click. So holding the Alt click, the Alt key and tapping one, that's uh, because we're using radial symmetry is using that. So this is quite handy if you wanna, for example, do something like this or like that, and then just use the similar to use, uh, you know, to do whatever. Or 
because you know how many subdivisions there are, you can also play around with the um, something like 16, right? So half of the radial count. So instead of 32, you have 16, and then you can have something like that, for instance. So these type of things are quite useful, especially for a cylind uh, cylindrical shape. But anyway, I just thought I, I'd mention that because it's quite handy, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna need it. All I wanted to do was choose just to attack these polygons, and that's it. Alrighty. So um, what I want to do is extract this this plane. So I'm gonna right click with the C modeler selected, by the way, and I'm gonna leave the Q mesh selected, and I can choose the polygroup all. Doesn't really matter. Um, these target polygons at this stage they don't they don't really matter because I tagged the polygon. So in other words, I, I did like, um, I overwrite, I overridden this, these polygons or what I wanna use. So let's click on that. And when you click, you can extrude that. If you hold the shift key, you can move that selection. So instead of extruding it, you're actually just moving it or you can hold control and that sort of extract that piece. That's exactly what I wanna do. So I'm just gonna move it up again. This is gonna be the lead and that's it, right? And now that we have these uh, separately, we can use the selection tools, hold control and shift to select that. And with the other you know, piece hidden, we can split hidden. Uh, split hidden for you guys would be under the split palette, uh, split hidden, this one right here. So now we have two. Uh, let me see the chat. Hey everyone. Welcome to the stream. Hola Pepe. Um, I have one and a half year in Seabridge, but I didn't know how to accept the curve to brush. Um, sorry, I'm not sure if that's a question. <laughs> um, all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this single-sided mesh. I'm also gonna turn on double to create the, the lead, right? Uh, and the lead really is the kind of like the most complex bit. Uh, so let's go ahead and actually extrude some edges so that we know where we are in terms of the space. So I'm gonna right click on an edge with, again, with the C modeler selected. I'm gonna click on extrude and just leave it as it is. And I'm gonna click and drag. And this is what the extrude, um, the extrude edge does. But when you click and drag, there, is, there are also some modifiers to that extrusion. So you can press the shift key and that will, if you just press it once, it will snap to like the 90 degree angles. So now I can extrude it like that. Or if I press it again, now I'm like in a free mode, press it again. You don't have to hold it. Um, it will just snap to, you know, to keep adding to it. Um, so maybe actually let's do, add a little bit so that we don't have to scale it later. So just a tiny bit more of space so that we can sort of like fit that, that lid on top. And let's do it again, click and drag, but this time I'm gonna press shift again and I'm gonna move that down like so. And if I go into solo mode, you'll see this is still a single-sided polygon or single-sided mesh, right? So it's open. Um, I guess you could do the same thing with, um, with a cylinder, squishing it and then deleting the bottom part. Uh, but this one is just a very clean way to, to go about it. Um, all right, so the other thing that these sort of leads have is just like, I don't know how to call it. It's a, it's a plastic thing that you just push. Uh, it's kind of like in a coffee when you push and oh, this is a long macchiato or this is a cappuccino. You just push those things and sort of like flip them so that you know what is what. So I'm just gonna recreate that idea in here. And they usually have, um, you know, a couple more things. <laughs> so I'm gonna push this thing down. Um, maybe let's right click on this edge and I'm gonna click on slide slide a slide um, I'm gonna slide the complete edge so remember when you have a uh, when you select the C modeler or any action then you have different targets so with the slide I can either choose how to you know to slide one single edge to slide the complete edge or a partial um, edge loop I want to click on complete and click and drag and that way we can sort of determine that outer rim of the of the top and I'm gonna go ahead and ta tag those polygons and right click, make sure I still have Q mesh and I'm gonna push this down just to add that additional 
piece of geometry. That's good. And automatically it creates that polygroup that we might use um, later on. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and right click again. This time I'm gonna insert an edge loop, a single edge loop. So I can click here and do this type of thing. And this is the one that I'm gonna use to determine uh, kind of like the the inner, <laughs> I don't know, the, the anatomy of a, of a lid, but like the inner portion of it where where the where the straw goes in. So let's say, I don't know, maybe something like, I don't know if the, if the things that I'm thinking of are outside or inside the, let's just make it a little bit bigger and then we put it inside, doesn't matter. Yeah, something like that. Again, tag these polygons, click and drag, something like that. Um, and we're gonna try to keep this uh, very simple and clean so that you know we can use something like dynamic subdivision and we'll have something that looks a lot smoother and really, really cool. Hey Alex, how you doing? I haven't seen you here for a while. Um, hi Pablo, met you at Silver Summit two years ago. Always learning something new. The keyboard function with the Q mesh, awesome. Love your, ah, great, thanks mate. Appreciate it. Um, so yeah, for this area, I'm gonna try to uh, create, I'm gonna, I'm gonna paint it so that I can show you what I'm trying to do. So this bit here is where you sort of like have this kind of like X and then you just take the straw and you smash it in and then just have the straw in here, right? Uh, but then around it, you have like these, I don't know, let's, let's make four of them. Right, and these are like little bubbles that you push. I I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, but in these areas, they're, they're like these little bubbles that you can just push, and, and that may be like, oh, diet coke or, or whatever. So I'm gonna make those because um, I want to show you like a, a cool technique for that, and it's something that you can use in a bunch of different things. Um, to highlight the faces when you're using the C modeler is just holding the Alt key. That's kind of like a a quick way to tag things. So I can tag things like that and then click and drag and it's gonna be used, uh, using whatever tool you selected in the C-Modeler only applied it to those faces. So we don't do that. Oh, and in the recent versions of Zbrush, you can also untag with the same idea. So if you start doing, if you wanna tag this line like that and then you just made a mistake and do this, right? It's like, oh, I just wanted to get, you know, tag the border. You can hold the Alt key and on tag that, right? And then you can just keep going. So just gonna untag that. Um, yeah. So to do those um, those kind of like bubbles, what I can do is right click, and I'm gonna insert a line roughly where I want them to. Maybe you know what? Let's do let's do it simple. So I'm gonna do an edge loop there, and another one here. Right, and the the idea with what I'm just doing here is to maybe have this line and this other line or this edge loop. So <laughs> I'm just trying to find a, a color that you can see you can see well. So this line right here, we can use it to create some points to then extrude or to uh, split and then we will end up with the with the hole. So that's the idea of creating these two additional loops in there. Uh, yeah, we're doing everything so far, everything with the Simola. Um At the top right here, you can see the thumbnail that I have selected. That's my current brush. So it says Simola there. Um, all right, so I think I might have maybe too many, too many loops. So what we can do is start um, simplifying this a little bit. You can go ahead and right click. I'm not sure, maybe it's fine, but you know, just to show you, you can right click on an edge and you can uh, delete edge loop complete. And then you can start deleting some edges. Um, you're gonna you know, break this center piece obviously, but it doesn't matter because it's, it's sort of like going, like if you select this to delete it, if you select this edge to delete that one, Sirius is gonna go ahead and delete that one and then it's going to continue this way. So you're actually going to delete these two or you can choose uh, partial, right click and uh, go to partial 
and that sort of like gets to uh, only uh, deletes one uh, but it sort of like merges these uh, points in the middle uh, but that is fine right so if you want to do it a little bit more uh, a bit cleaner than what i'm doing what i would suggest and this is only uh, the only reason i'm saying this is because we have triangles in here uh, is to delete this part so i can hold control and shift to select this selection or select these pieces invert the selection and then i can delete hidden so delete hidden i'm gonna turn off the floor as well so now we basically opened a a hole in here, but um, that will make it a lot easier to delete some of these um, these lines. And I can use the symmetry again, um, like I showed you before, just a, a quick way to delete a few. So right click, make sure delete is selected and edge loop complete or edge loop partial. At this point, these two are the same because yeah, the, the edge finishes in this um, open area. So what I'll do is I'm going to click on this one. And as you can see, because I had the radial symmetry, it just simplifies things a lot more, uh, which, you know, it's pretty, yeah, it's pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and remove that symmetry now. And just to show you what this is doing, if I enable dynamic, which for you guys would be the geometry, dynamics of vision, click dyna dynamic, um, you can still have a pretty smooth version of that lead, right? So. Let's go ahead and do the the bubble uh, the bubbles things that I was talking about, and perhaps the you know the um, yeah cover this hole. <laughs> so first, um, because I want to do four of these, I'm gonna enable symmetry again, and in the y axis. So oh, maybe I can show you now. This is this is how um, I know which axis to choose because you have these you have these references or this reference for the floor. So the y, um, the y axis or the green one is the one push like going up. <laughs> um, this becomes almost like second nature when you get used to it, but you have, this is the y axis. This is the z axis and this is the x axis, right? So this is exactly what you have in here uh, as a reference, right? In the, in the floor. Um, and the way that this works in terms of the symmetry is if you select the Y, like I have in here with radial symmetry, and obviously symmetry is enabled, Siri is going to look at that Y that you selected here, that Y axis, and it's going to apply 16 um, instances of that brush. So it's going to be around, around that axis. If you switch to the Z axis, it's going to be around this axis and so on and so forth. Right. So, um, yeah, so now I can go ahead and select four. That's exactly how many bubbles I want to add. Um, still don't know <laughs> what, what the names are, uh, but I'm going to click on, I'm going to put them in here. So click and drag. Oh, by default, by default, if I right click on, a on an edge or an, sorry, on a point, uh, I think the default is not split, but I just selected split. So I can click on split and that's what this is what you get when you split. So I'm going to exaggerate it a little bit around there. And when you use the split, it Cirrus creates a different polygroup. And it also, as you can see, there's some um, dotted lines around. That's indicating that there is a uh, crease. Anyway, I will get back to that. Um, but yeah, um, I don't want to keep these as they are. I'm actually going to delete those. So I'm going to right click, go to delete, and I'm going to make sure that polygroup all is selected. So polygroup all is going to look at the same color or the same type of uh, polygroup, and it's going to delete everything that has the same polygroup. So if I click on this blue one, it's going to delete those two um, edges or polyloops. So I'll do that. So in this case, I just want to delete those, or you can also manually tag them with Alt. All right, so now <laughs> we're getting a little bit closer uh, to what I wanted to create, but in order to create these bubbles, and this is the reason why I deleted those, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna close those holes with convex hole. By default, I think the, yeah, the default of close would be concave hole, but that's just gonna create triangles. So you can click and create that, or maybe here. Yeah, you'll see it's just more, um, it's kind of like a decimated version of it, whereas with the convex hole it also creates triangles but it creates everything towards the center and you can determine 
how many loops are between the edges that you clicked on and the center. And you can also change the, um, the curvature. So I'm gonna show you what I mean by, by that. But I'm gonna click on this edge and that creates, that closes the hole, but then I can drag left and right to move this up and down, that point. And if I drag up and down, I can add or remove um, loops. So I can just add a few more and then do this type of thing, which is pretty cool. Uh, so just so you have an idea of what I did there. So you have this kind of like this matrix. So um, up and down, actually, this is a lot easier. After you click with that tool selected and your mouse, up and down will um, add the loops or remove, right? And left and right is just gonna push things down. So it's gonna make it like this, or if you go to the right, it's gonna make it like that. Right, so that's how you can, in one single click, you can create this uh, more complex shape, which is you know pretty pretty cool. And if you don't move up and down, uh, or if you just want to create loops, you can just sorry. If you don't want to um, create any volume, you can just move it up and down and just create loops. So if I click on this one, let's remove symmetry. Click on this one. If I uh, let go, oops, it will remember <laughs> actually my uh, my preview settings like you see here. But if I click and drag left and right, sorry, up and down, it will just add loops. So you can do that like that. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and close this actually. Maybe, no, I'm gonna leave it without um, loops. All right, so now we have a bunch of uh, polygroups, so what I like to do is kind of like unify them a little bit. So I'm gonna use my control and shift to select the ones that I that I need. And I'm gonna auto group them or actually control W to give them a single polygroup. Um, hey Luis, uh, Troscar, but it doesn't create perfect circles with the split tool. Um, it does, it just, Right now it doesn't do it because we have that sort of tapering. So it does, it does, um, how do you call it? Like a proportional, it, it is proportional to the, to this basically. So this side is a lot larger than this side. So when you create, create that, um, yeah, that dot is gonna be, you know, larger in this area than in this area. But it's not a big deal in here. If you wanna do like a perfect circle, what you can do is um, rearrange those points before you actually create it, uh, which, you know, I couldn't be bothered doing it because it's, it's very, um, you know, very minimal, but you could actually do it and that's, yeah, totally fine. So if I wanna create like a perfect circle in here, uh, all I need to do is, I'm gonna use the move brush, or you, you can, Right click on an edge, or not an edge, or on a point with the C model actually. And you can slide that point, so. Or move it actually, move, 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 move. Ah, it's a little bit hard to do it. So I'm just gonna do it with the move brush. But this is something that you can totally do it, it's just, can't be bothered doing it. <laughs> but I'll make this a little bit more Oops. You know, and when you do it in, in this case, I mean, you still, I mean, the, the topologies change, but you don't see much difference in uh, when you actually render it, like for example. Um, but now this is gonna be more proportional and you can do that, but you know, can't be bothered doing it. I think it's just fine for this. Yeah, that's right. It's like the midpoint um, of whatever, you know, if you have like a perfect square, like a cube, and you do the same thing, it's gonna be a perfect circle. Um, but yeah, all right. So I'm gonna turn on dynamic, just so that you can see 
how it's looking. Um, and what I'll do is maybe just add a few edge loops just to f to fix these um, these edges a little bit. And um, I'm also going to soften this because it is it's too harsh. And that is just because we have those um, crevices, not crevices, uh, creases. So in the crease palette, I'm just going to click on on crease all, and that's just going to soft all those edges. Let's go back to C modeler, and uh, I'm going to manually add those. And actually, I'm going to right click here on this point with the C modeler, and I'm going to split this like I did before around there, and right click on this new polygroup, delete it because I, I want to create that effect of the um, yeah of the cut of that sort of cross going in. Uh, so what I'll do is I'm going to select symmetry again four I think four is fine and I'm going to right click and add an edge and extrude that edge so click and drag oh, I'm actually dragging it but it sort of remembers the last thing that I use so if you remember when we extrude that edge uh, we extruded this like in 90 degrees so that's what I couldn't see it so I can click and drag press shift again just to do it like so uh, maybe Just a tiny bit. Okay, so I just extruded that one inwards. Uh, again, I'm gonna increase all of that, and I'm gonna delete one of these polygons. You can split it, but I think I'm gonna just delete one. So I'm gonna tag one of those. Right click, make sure delete is enabled, and delete that one. Right. So now I can right click on this edge, and I can move it or slide it. Um, I'm just gonna move it. I think. So the one in the center, I'm going to click and drag to do that. Again, it's not, you can be more precise if you want. It's not perfect. Right. Um, and then I can just bring these two or bring all of these ones closer together. So I can just, oops, right. Um, let's do it with the move brush. It's a lot faster. So this is just kind of like to create that that area where the yeah where the straw goes, and you can also, by the way, because I'm using dynamic now, um, you can sort of like use the creasing tool or using the C modeler to right click uh, on an edge, and we're gonna crease that. Crease edge loop complete. Click on oops, not edge loop complete. Sorry, edge loop partial. Click on that. Oops. There we go. Ah, it's not working. So right click, crease edge. All right. Let's click on that. Okay. <laughs> so if this happens to you, is because I'm actually mistakenly clicking on the face, and because my action for the face delete is just removing those polygons. So if you're having um, trouble like selecting or doing some action, that's why the simulator has a an option that it says uh, do nothing. So if I right click on a face and I click on do nothing, when I click on the face, um, Siri's not gonna do anything. So I can just basically click on those and it's gonna be a lot a lot easier to you know select the the edges. Um, let's see if that looks better. All right, so that's looking a lot better. I'm gonna right click and click insert with the dynamic so that I can click and drag and then just sharpen those those borders a little bit. Right? And um, I think I might wanna Let's see, insert. Yeah, I'm gonna insert um, an extra loop in here. I have to do it manually, but if you wanted to, you know, if you want this loop to be consistent across all of these flaps that are already separated, 
uh, what you can do is uh, something like um, let's see hold control and shift and there is an option here called the slice circle so if you click on this one you can hold control and shift and do this and it's gonna slice basically that geometry and that creates yeah that loop that is right there in the middle um, and another cool thing that you can do is right click on an edge with the Cmodeler and you can mask the edge loop so I'm gonna click on edge loop complete with the mask selected and that way I can click and drag or not click and drag click once and I'm basically masking just that loop that I created here so that I can invert the mask control click outside bring in the gizmo which is here center to the unmask areas and then I can scale that and move that up just to give it a bit more of a curvature perfect all right we are getting there uh, I'm just gonna sharpen things a little bit and I'm gonna do that simply by adding some edge loops with the dynamic enable so right click on a on, a, on an edge when I click on insert click and drag click and drag obviously every time that I click and drag and get closer to the to the border this is gonna sharpen things uh, so that's exactly what I'm gonna do here for this these dots uh, with the radial symmetry so that I can do it consistently in all of them just a tiny bit um, they're a little bit too too big um, but we can change that very quickly I'll show you how we just add a, another bit of um, edge loop there and maybe another one here towards the top all right so the lead for our soda is almost ready uh, I mean we spent quite a bit of time doing this but it you know it's all right um, I'm going to I'm going to select the select lasso oh, sorry the select rectangular hold control and shift and select this polygroup and I'm going to remove this area from that group so in other words let's hold the alt key holding control and shift and hold alt to just hide those and I'm going to give it a single polygroup so that I can control this a little bit better and I'm going to hold control and mask everything bring back the rest Oh, actually let's remove the mask first select this control to mask now invert the mask and using the symmetry or the um, yeah the radial symmetry that I've been using because we have four of these points um, I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the gizmo center to the unmask areas before uh, so if you have symmetry it's obviously gonna center it right in the middle of those four um, on select or on mask areas so Deactivate symmetry, center to one, or actually, let's just move it. So I'm gonna hold the Alt key and move this pivot, or you can click on this um, lock icon. So I just wanna move this a little bit closer. And I should have actually masked a little bit more. Yeah, so I'm gonna use the mask lasso to mask a bit more of that. Invert that, bring in the gizmo, and I can now bring in this a little bit closer. And if you want, you can actually scale this a bit more, but I think this is fine. And the other thing I want to do is just scale it down a bit. So I'm going to move the gizmo or the pivot to roughly that line and push this down a bit. All right. So we're nearly there, um, but this is still a single-sided mesh, right? If we want to add a bit of thickness, we can use the dynamic. Well, we're already using the dynamic to get this smoothness um, going, and we can make it a bit more, a bit more smooth or a bit smoother by moving this smooth subdivision. So we're, we're previewing at this stage with four. We're previewing um, a level four of subdivisions, uh, but with thickness, if I turn around, and if you cannot see the on, like underneath the polygons because you don't have double enable which for you guys would be on the display properties here 
Um, yeah, so here with thickness, thickness, we can do this and add thickness to all of that. Uh, right now, by default, uh, let's see. I'm gonna exaggerate it a little bit. So this thickness right now, what it's doing is looking at that single sided mesh, which is right in the middle and it's adding this much thickness, like a value of 0 0.0816, which, you know, whatever value that is, um, is adding this much to both sides. So it's going in and out. And that's sort of like creating, you know, it might create issues for you depending on the, on the mesh that you have. Uh, so if I change the offset, that's how you can basically, uh, yeah, let's do it with blue. So this offset right here allows you to offset where you want to add or start the thickness process. So you can, uh, with positive values, so plus one, positive one, this is going to start from here. So it's going to add, this value is going to add it in this area. And if you use something else like minus one, it's going to be inwards, right? So the same amount, but it's just going to offset that thickness. So I can move it to minus. So it's going to be inwards. So, you know, from the outside, you see it's exactly the same thing as what we had before. If, whereas if I put it to a hundred, it looks like inflated because it's pushing that thickness outwards. Um, so I'm going to push it back. Actually, I'm just looking at this and that looks kind of fun. A bit more stylized. Uh, nah, let's just go back to what I was doing. So minus 100 and let's turn up the floor, but then we can reduce the thickness to, you know, this, the thickness of a plastic cup, <laughs> which is pretty, pretty thin anyway. Okay. And this is still dynamic. We haven't applied anything. If I turn off dynamic, we still have a single sided mesh, uh, pretty low rest, which is pretty cool. But for render, we can enable dynamic and that's it. Um, let me have a look at the chat. Do I know when the Silver Summit is? Uh, not, not really. It usually is in September, but not sure. Uh, Lee Gibbons, I have my uh, low poly multi tool and high poly multi tool FBS exporter in Substance. I try to beg, but no normals come through. I export one sub tool as a separate FBX. It works. Um, yeah, that's a Lee. That's a that's a question for you know. I'll I'll have to have um, substance in front of me. Mm, I can I cannot think of of anything. It's a very specific question. What I would suggest is to try a different FBX maybe. Um, so if you go to the C plugin and you go to FBX. Um, just try something else. Uh, I would try 2009 first. So you can click on this and cycle through different and like versions of FBX. Um, yeah. So I would start with 2009 and try that. And if it doesn't work, try 2019 as well. It's pretty, you know, pretty bulletproof. Um, you know, because by default it would be 2020, and might there, there might be incompatibilities with whatever you're trying to do. Uh, I'm not sure. Like again, it's uh, something very specific that I will have to be looking at the the example. Uh, what happened if you use thickness with symmetry? Um, same thing. The symmetry is just um, a way to manipulate the, the mesh. Like it's not if you add symmetry. Oh, sorry. If you add thickness uh, using symmetry, it's just gonna, you know, it's just gonna grab whatever symmetrical parts you're using with that symmetry, and it's gonna create the thickness. Then not a big deal. Um, if you were, if you were to make one of the push tabs pushed in, and if I selected, how would you do that? Uh, can you please those use uh, your system specs? Uh, all of my system specs and all of that, it's in in the in the website and Seabridge guides. I I really don't know. I know I have a an RTX. Um, which, you know, like a, a graphics card, but it's not relevant to Zero. Zero doesn't use any graphics card. And I have a, um, I think it's called a Threadripper Ryzen, Ryzen. Um, all of the specs, uh, I'm not like big on that system, but all of those specs are in my, um, on my website. And I have, you know, I have, I have a whole Zero guide website about how I set up my, my entire workshop.
All right, so if I wanna, yeah, let's go ahead and turn off symmetry, and I'm gonna go ahead and push in one of these uh, things in. All right, um, what I'll do is hold Control and Shift, select them, or select the polygroups, that's why I keep the polygroups. Hold Control and Shift to select only one. I'm gonna assign a different polygroup. So again, uh, polygroups are just uh, amazing <laughs> so that you can control things a lot more, have more control over how you select things. So what I'll do with this is hold Control and Shift now, select that. Um, you can delete it and create the same version that I did before but invert it, or um, we can mask it, invert the, ma the mask, bring in the gizmo, center to the unmask areas, and we can flatten it or just invert that. Um, I'm gonna show you something else because that one is just gonna flatten things. Um, so this is what I'll do. I'm gonna clear the mask. There's many ways of doing it, but I think what I'm gonna show you is, is, a, is a cool way to, or it's a different way at least. So I'm gonna delete this poly loop around just to, yeah, just to remove the, the connection between this bubble and the rest of the, of the cap. So I'm gonna right click on, Oh, we can just tag it. Oops. Let's remember we had yeah delete. Let's wait until zero saves. Um, so I'm gonna hold the Alt key and tag all this loop, and I have the delete selected. I'm gonna click delete. So now I remove that. Um, yeah, I remove that connection. So now I can hold Control and Shift or yeah Control and Shift to select the whole thing, mask it, right? Bring in the gizmo, infer the mask, and now I'm gonna right, uh, sorry, not right click, I'm gonna rotate around from this angle, so I have perspective off as well, so that's why I can sort of hold shift and snap there, and I'm gonna rotate, holding shift to snap to 180 degrees, and I'm gonna push this one in a little bit. So this is the one that's gonna be pushed in. Now, I'm gonna clear the, the mask and this is then I'm need, I just need to connect this again but before I do that because I I had a single side mesh and I flipped it the normals of that little bubble are flipped so if I turn off double you see you won't be able to see this but if I rotate around you will see it from this angle but then you don't see the cap so what I need to do is just flip the normals of this and the normals are just like in which direction the polygons are facing so uh, let's turn this off um, I'm gonna hold Control and Shift to isolate this, right? And you see, I don't see the polygon from one side, uh, so I just need to go and flip the normals, and now I can see it from this side. Bring back everything. Just double check that double is <laughs> double check that double is disabled, and make sure that yeah, all normals are correct. So now we have that ready to go. Um, and I think I might have. Let me just double check that. Yeah, I think this should have been like that. Yeah. All right. I, I just made sure that the, the edges were lining up. Um, but yeah, so now that you have this, what you can do is bridge these two. So you can right click this edge and go to bridge. And you can bridge two holes or you can bridge, bridge edges. Uh, you can do it manually. So one by one, or you can click two holes. Um, in this case, I think um, it is Sirius is determining or is, is interpreting this that I have here as two holes. So one of the holes, let me just give you an example of what I mean. Um, so you have the lid and you have this hole. So this is pretty straightforward. This is a, a, a hole. But then you have this mesh here that is also having a hole. So if you were to exaggerate the shape of that, it's actually like a like a bullet. Right, so Sirius is looking at this and say, "Yep, this is, there's a, a hole in here, and there's another one in here, so we can use the bridge to basically connect these two." Um, let's go ahead and bring that. So I'm gonna click on this first edge, and then on this one, and that's it. Um, I only want one, so I can click and drag as well. 
I think by default it should do, oh, it just does um, one. So you can right click and delete that one. Just to have the same amount of uh, geometry as the other ones. And just to complete this, this process, select that, invert that selection. Oops. I want to select the, the move brush just in case. Invert the selection, control W to assign a single polygroup. And now we have the the pushed in <laughs> version of the of the bubble. So yeah. Hopefully that um that helps. Uh, the flip normal is on the uh, display properties. So right next to the double, you can flip normal. And it will only flip whatever is visible. So that's why it's pretty handy. Um, I have these two buttons here in my UI. By the way, um, in if you go to my YouTube channel, there is a tutorial on how to customize and, and I show you how to customize the UI in ZBrush. And in the description of the video, there are links to download my UI. So if you like the the UI that I'm using, uh, or if you want to, you know, follow along with what I'm doing, you can also download that and, um, yeah, and so that you have the, the buttons wherever you are, um, you have the buttons in the same place that I have. Uh, by the way, if you let's say if you download my UI or any UI that you download from someone else, uh, you want to figure out where things are or what where buttons belong to what palette. You can hold the Alt key and click on the button. So if I click on this. Um, let's say, let's say this occlusion one. So if I turn occlusion, this is like a preview occlusion, as you can see here. Um, I can hold the Alt key and click on that button, and it will open up the the palette that this occlusion belongs to. So I have it here, preview ambient occlusion, right? And that's you know that's pretty cool. Uh, your YouTube channel is Pablo Munoz. Yeah, that's the that's the one. Um, let me see if I can bring it. To be honest, uh, I mean, I'm I'm starting up with with YouTube. I think it's a it's a great um, search engine. I'm not I'm not I'm not great at it. I'm not very well versed on how the whole thing works. Um, and I actually created the channel, and I was just trying to figure out how to, yeah, create kind of like the name, or well, not the name, but like, you know, YouTube slash channel, whatever. Um, so let me just bring it here. So yeah, I have the channel URL and then the custom one is this one. I'll put it in the, yeah. <laughs> um, anyway, what I was saying is, uh, as you can see, my, my name, it's like the, the Spanish, it has the Spanish, um, like the N with the little hat thingy and the same as the, the tilde in the O. So <laughs> it do it doesn't really make a difference, but I didn't know at the time, so I just left it that I cannot change it now, or I don't know how to change it. Um, so it's a little bit sometimes a little bit hard to to get it. Um, anyway, it's uh, I'll put the link now on the to the actual thing that I'm talking about. Uh, you can watch it later. So that's the, the link that I just shared. That's the link to the video that I'm talking about and that has the links to the UI and, and all of that. Um, cool, alrighty. So we have this um, ready to go. I mean, you can add other things that I know that are part of, um, you know, let's say like uh, like text. You can add, you can add text to, to these areas. Um, you can use something like the plugin, the 3D text. Uh, I'm going to create one just to show you, but probably I don't want to use it. I want to keep it a bit more stylized. Uh, so in this uh, C plugin, it comes with ZBrush, the 3D text and vector shape. You can click on new text and call this um, super fast food. Uh, let's do it in, let's actually do it in capital letters. Super fast food. So that creates a new subtool here in your tool with the text in 3D, super fast food. And you can just dog that in here. And here in the in the plugin with that tool selected, you can change like the extrusion. 
um, just with those sliders we can bevel it so we can get closer and bevel things a little bit. We can change the spacing between the letters, we can change the font so you know you can change uh, load your own fonts um yeah that's <laughs> that's basically it and you can increase maybe that's too much bevel you can increase the bevel resolution and that will add additional loops so right now we have only one poly loop we can add a few more edge loops in that edge uh you can change the curvature curvature so right now it is a flat edge or flat uh bevel so right now it's this is the this is the actual letter and the bevel is this but it's flat so you can take um, the curvature and make it like a little bit more bubbly so for the plastic cup might be useful so you can add a bit of curvature outwards so it's a bit more rounded um, what else you can do you can add more resolution to the actual uh, letters so it's, it's, it's a really cool uh, really cool plugin and that's it once you're happy with it you can just leave it as it is really there's not much else that you need to do um, and then you know if you want to make it a kind of like a, a twisted or make it follow a certain pad you can use something like the arc bent arc so do this right um, and then you can use this radius to bring it closer or or not um, I don't know might work why not Let's click accept. I'm just gonna add it here so that you can see front of fast food. Rotate 90 degrees. Push that down. So <laughs> yeah, we we can leave it there. It doesn't doesn't matter. So we are pretty much done with the the lid. That was kind of like the complex area, uh, part of this soda. The bottom part. Let's just go quickly and tweak some some things. So the first thing is with the C modeler. We're gonna turn on symmetry as well, and or just remove symmetry. It doesn't matter. Uh, I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna click on delete. Delete that face and enable double. So now we have this hollow uh, thing, and here at the bottom, just to make things a bit more like let's call it realistic, I'm gonna go ahead and tag this just to show you more tools from the Simodela. Uh, right click on this face, and I'm gonna click on inset, which is different from insert, obviously. So inset is gonna take whatever I have tagged or selected, and it's gonna inset towards this. Click and drag. And this is gonna be just to add a bit of that. Um, it's kind of like a flap or something that they have. Right click, click on Q mesh, and I'm gonna select this uh, yellow one. Right click again, Q mesh. I have polygroup also. Only the polygroup that I clicked on initially is gonna be affected. So I'm gonna click on that and just push this up a, li a little bit. Right click, go to insert. And the insert, let's insert a couple of loops in here, just so that when we use the dynamic subdivision, it gets sharper there. And same, same thing with here, with this area. All right, and of course, we can go ahead and enable dynamic for this guy, enable thickness. And I think the, the offset in this case works well uh, for both sides. And that's it. Actually, you know, this, if you, again, if we want to be a bit more um, thorough about like the, the design, uh, these cups, they have like a little, you know, like folding, um, how do you call that? Anyway, it's like the, the rim area is folded. It's like if it is cardboard, uh, it's folded so that it has like a bit more thickness and when you put the lid it sort of like clips into that uh, I don't know if you you know what I'm talking about but I want to right click this edge um, I'm going to slide the whole thing so slide edge lip complete um, you can also hold control and shift to isolate just this bit that, that rim area control W 
to assign a different polygroup so that we can only affect this and we can go ahead and right click actually because we're going to be using dynamic what i'll do is add a new edge loop here so right click insert and i'm going to put this one very very close to that point um, and then i'm just going to click on the polygroup because i have the q mesh selected click and drag but instead of extruding i'm just going to hold the shift key and i'm just going to sort of move this away from the center a, a tiny bit um, and then we can enable thickness i'm also going to remove some of the hang on yeah so there's some creasing here that i don't want uh, so let's go ahead and right click on this edge go to crease edge loop complete so i'm going to crease this whole thing so that when i enable dynamic it's pretty sharp and that's it that's really all i want really um there's another cool thing that you can do with dynamic by the way so you see that let's go to move brush different polygroup uh, different material so you see that by adding the thickness to this single-sided mesh uh, we have these very harsh edges at the top because of the of the thickness you can actually define um, how smooth this is in the in this preview so all i'm going to do is click on this post subdivision thickness click on that and that sort of removes that so basically um Sivers will smooth things after it the the thickness is applied so that gives me maybe it's a little bit too a little bit too thick that border so i'm just going to push this down a bit there we go and that's really all there is to it let's go ahead and bring in the rest so get out of solo mode uh, and i'm going to move the the lead with the text together um, so if i select the the lead, bring in the gizmo, the center to the unmask areas, reset the, rota the rotation holding um, the alt key and click on this rotation icon. If I move this by itself, it's just gonna, you know, I'll have to reposition everything. So you can actually move multiple things at once. So you can click on this pizza icon here to, mul to move multiple subtools. But if I move that now, it's gonna move everything that is visible. So um, you can. You know, for example, you can just select the um, the cup and you can mask everything, then go back to this and then because it is masked, it's not gonna move. However, it's a lot easier. So let's unmask that. Let's go back here. It's a lot a lot easier if you hold Control and Shift to actually hide um, selections from these uh, multiple subtool movements. So with the gizmo selected in the select sorry so selecting the subtool and then bringing the gizmo and then selecting this icon to move multiple things at once then you can hold control and shift and let's say i only want to move the you know these two um these two subtools i'm going to hold control and shift and go over the one that i don't want then press the alt key and hide it right or alternatively you can just hold control and shift and just select the ones that you want to move and you don't have to be um, you don't have to be precise so you can literally just as long as you sort of touch with that selection the tools that you don't want to move so let's say if you have something a bit more complex or you know I don't know hold control and shift and holding the alt key just to subtract from that selection so as long as I touch this it's just gonna give me that hatched um, pattern indicating that this one is not gonna move anyway maybe you already know that but I'm just gonna move this like so I think I need to make it a bit smaller there we go cool so we have the the soda <laughs> ready for our combo um, what's the time now yeah we have plenty of time so we're gonna do the straw obviously just to make it more fun um, and maybe some fries that'll be cool let me just check the chat and have a sip of water uh, the alt and click to find the button is fairly new now 
it's it's one of those things that is not necessarily I don't know if it is even documented, <laughs> but it's one of those things that um that are not like super popular, but it's been there for ages. <laughs> Uh, would I put the drink inside? Mm, probably not. You won't be able to see it, really. And to put liquid inside is you can just select the uh, the cup itself or the, the yeah this sub tool and shrink it, close it, and that's liquid already. And you can just throw in some cubes to to add ice. Um, but yeah, not in, in this case. I don't think you're gonna see it anyway. Okay, so let's do the the straw again. Multiple ways of doing the same thing. Um, I suppose the the easiest one would be using sea spheres, so that we have a clean, sort of consistent thickness. And I'm gonna show you a cool tip as well. So I'm gonna click on the tool thumbnail, click on sea sphere. Um, and with the sea spheres, if you have the draw selected, and I click and drag, you can determine the size of that sea sphere. So you can do this, then do that, do that, do that, do that. And then when you go ahead and enable adaptive skin, so you can remove this uh, the dynamesh. By default, if you can click on preview, it just shows you this, <laughs> this blob. And if I turn on polyframe, you'll see it is a dynamesh object. So what you can do is remove dynamesh, click on preview, and now you see uh, two levels of subdivision. You can also remove that and only see one, uh, but obviously this is not consistent. So let's just undo all of that. And the way that this works for that, um, for the specific purpose that we're going to use it, which is creating that that straw, um, we need to click and drag. And then if you hold the shift key, Sirius is going to match the size of the previous sphere, C sphere, right? So now I know for a fact that this sphere is the same size as this sphere. And if I just go ahead and move that up, Right, that um, that whole section is going to be consistent. So I can preview that, and it's just maybe that's not what I need. There we go. It should be consistent. Uh, I think I might have made a mistake. Mm. Hang on. There we go. I'm gonna have to create another one. So. Let's create two C spheres so that there is enough <laughs> geometry. Um, but yeah, all all I did was just creating a an additional C sphere here, but holding the shift key, it allows you to maintain the same thickness all across, right? So now um, let's just push this one up a little bit. So that's gonna be the straw, and I'm gonna click on draw, click and drag, holding the shift key, will snap to the previous one, then move, and that's, yeah, that's gonna be the, the straw. So I, I have that curvature in here. So I can click on preview to see how this actually works. Um, and then, you know, this is getting a little bit skewing, uh, like it's skewing around here. Uh, we can fix this in a couple of ways. We can add maybe one in there and one in there, just to have more geometry towards this area and sort of like control this skewing, you know, before it was more like this, all of these loops, uh, but now it's just sort of limited to this um, to this section. And with the move brush, we can actually move this up a little bit. Just trying to create more of a, of a curvature here. Again, this is one way to do it. It's not, you know, the only way in ZBrush. Um, so we have this ready to go. We can take this density, set it to, to one, click on make adaptive skin, and ZBrush will create a skin based on, let's turn off preview, based on that C sphere chain. So this one right here. So now this is a normal mesh that we can manipulate. And, you know, we can do, <laughs> it's a little bit thick, so we can actually maybe smooth things out a little bit and maybe polish things as well so that we get a, a nicer curvature in here and I'm going to use the the select lasso and I'm going to remove maybe that and that one as well just to open that that straw right maybe this one as well 
So delete hidden. Um, and I think I need to make this a little bit longer. So I'm gonna bring in the C modeler we've been using. Right click, and I'm gonna use the extrude. Click. Uh, maybe some uh, somewhere there. Perfect. Then right click, add insert. So I'm just gonna add a few more loops in here. Sort of like to match the the same amount of polygons just to be consistent. Um, other than that, we can go ahead and I think maybe we need to add sort of like that. Um, <laughs> how do you call it? Yeah, there's, there's kind of like um, a series of, of ridges here where you can just bend the, the straw. So we can do that by maybe adding more polygroups. So we can right click, insert, one there, one there, another there. So I'm gonna make it a lot, a lot more, more stylized. Um, hang on. Uh, you could make the little box to place the burger. Yeah, we have time. We do that. Um, yeah, just wanna cover some of the, the basics <laughs> of the combo. When you finish you uh, a high poly model, say seventy to hundred million polygons, do you export this as an FBX for baking? My series seems to crash to create. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't. I wouldn't export um a hundred million polygons. That's way too much. Um, yeah, I would never, I would never export that as an FBX. Uh, I think the the largest thing that I've exported as an FBX has been, uh, I think, forty million. Um, but yeah, it takes a long time. It doesn't crash, but it takes a long time. What I would do is decimate um, at a higher number so that you don't see the faceted polygons. That's something that I do. I just decimate a really high poly. And then use that as my my high poly too, because with the decimation with the baking you don't need uh, you don't need to have like UVs or anything. Although with the decimation you can keep UVs if you want to, but I just decimated and then export it. Uh, did you save a history recall on the undo bar? No, this is I don't know what this uh, I've, I've done it. I, I think I saved. Because uh, I had ZBrush open before, so I think I might might have saved something, and it's there, but it shouldn't be there. It shouldn't be red. Are you using a mouse? No, I'm using my my Cintiq, um, but I do have the the three D space mouse, which is pretty cool. So maybe we can use that. Um, cool. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and right click on this edge loop. Because by the way, I need to I need to leave before eleven, so we have about thirty minutes left. So I'm gonna right click, and I'm gonna use the bevel, the bevel that we haven't used before, and I'm gonna bevel the uh, edge loop complete. So I can click and drag to create this, and the the reason I'm doing this is just to generate the thickness of whatever I'm gonna extrude. So this is gonna make more sense in just a second. So I'm gonna click and drag, and then I can click on all of these ones. And Sirius will remember the last settings that I use for that bevel. So I can click like that. And I know for a fact that this is consistent, right? So I think that's good. And now we have obviously every single thing, every single thing that we just did as polygroups. Uh, so what I can do is we can take advantage of those polygroups, but I'm just going to hold Control and W to, um, to create a single polygroup. And then I'm going to show you something else that the C model can do. So you can create a polygroup to go around it. So, or sorry, use the poly loop to create a polygroup. <laughs> so I can right click on this edge right here and go to polygroup. And you can say this poly loop. So I can click on that. And again, Sirius will remember the latest setting. So it's just going to assign the same polygroup to all of those. And because now these are the same, I can right click on a face, we have QMesh selected, and I can click and drag to add that, or I can just, in, you know, insert it. I think extruding it might work a bit better. 
there we go. And if I do dynamic, you'll have that um, that effect. Obviously, we might need to, or you might want to make this a bit more of um more obvious. So uh, let's see. I'm just gonna think a, a different way of going about it. So you can extrude that definitely, but you can also add. Yeah, let's. I'm gonna give you a, a, another option. So I'm gonna right click. I'm gonna click on insert, and I'm gonna click on insert multiple edge loops. So obviously, if I click and drag, this creates multiples or multiple edge loops, which is totally fine. So you can do that if you wanna be more consistent in this. So remove all of those and then just click and drag to create all of this. Uh, but the reason I selected that one is because if you click and don't drag, so just click on once, it will create that poly loop right in the middle. So I'm gonna just click all of these to create one in the middle, and then all of these ones with a different polygroup to create another one. Right, so then we can use uh, something like we did before. So right click to select this um, this edge. I'm gonna go to mask, poly, loop, uh, poly edge loop complete, sorry, edge loop complete. Click on that one and I'm gonna mask out all the, um, edge loops that are in the center of the dark green polygroup, right? And I'm gonna invert that mask. And instead of using the gizmo or anything like that, because I only have those selected, I can bring in something like the inflate, which is gonna push those on mask edges uh, based on their normal. So I can do this. All right, so that might be better. Uh, we can also turn on dynamic to sort of see what this is doing. So we can do that. And then we can potentially do the same thing with the other ones. So let's select the inner ones. Oops. Oh, that's actually not too bad. That's a mistake, but anyway, let's not do that. Um, yeah, so mask those inner loops, invert the mask, and I'm gonna in deflate those. So that makes more sense. Um, perhaps we can we can bevel this one a little bit so it's not as harsh. So we can right click on that edge, go to bevel, and do this maybe here, just at the beginning and the end. <laughs> and there we go. We have the the straw. Um, another thing that we can do just for the sake of making things. Uh, Oh, I was just gonna add like a like a line, but I think it's fine. And of course, we can go to the dynamic and add a little bit of thickness as well. All of this is a preview. Just add a, a tiny bit of thickness here, and that helps to kind of like pinch this a little bit. Uh, we can play with the offset just to make this a bit more um, chubby. Or not, I think it works fine. Uh, cool. So. We are ready to go. Oh, this is we're working in a separate tool, so all we have to do is go to the copy tool or copy sub tool, go to our working mesh and paste that in. And it comes with all the settings for the subdivision and everything. Um I'm gonna go ahead and hold the alt key just to place this roughly in there. Actually, I'm gonna hold the alt key and just move this like so uh to this area. So I'm placing the pivot where I want this straw to sort of like come out of the of the soda thing. <laughs> so that way I can just move it like that to that point. And from this point, I can just scale it down. A bit more. There we go. And I can go into transparent just to see. I'm doing and I feel like it's maybe maybe too short <laughs> so yeah we can just bring in the gizmo turn off dynamic and we can extrude all of this not extrude um scale it so I'm gonna mask something like this invert that bring in the gizmo and from this point at the top let's just go ahead and scale that in the y-axis there we go 
you can oh by the way you can make this a uh, oops be careful with those maskings uh, masking tools um there we go there that all right so yeah that's that's good to go um let's do a quick save just in case um and guys if you have any questions put it in the chat i'm gonna have a quick look uh, i'm searching hey how you doing man yeah <laughs> make sure that you that you watch the the lessons they're all already up uh for the creature workshop the q a is happening in a couple of weeks Paolo, was your yeah the creature workshop yeah it was really really good uh, we had we had a lot of fun and we did um we did some really cool stuff um yeah I haven't had that much fun like building creatures in, in a while because I think in every single like it was scheduled to be three days uh, sorry three hours a day for like the the whole week um but yeah we were just like in the in the zone <laughs> working so I think we did like at least an extra hour every day or an extra 40 minutes every every day uh or you know something like that just because we were like in the middle of it but it was pretty fun um thanks for asking by the way if you're interested um i'm planning on, on setting because I, I recorded everything so i'm just gonna uh do us some like some editing and unpack everything into a, a short intensive intensive course um, like a mini course similar to the series for illustrators that is on the website, which are, it's a course, but it's the recordings of that workshop. So I'm going to set it up as a, as a short course and make it available if someone is interested in creature design. All right. Um, yeah, so we finished with this. Let's go ahead and let's see. Let's bring it into the... Uh, into the burger so into the burger we're gonna go ahead and create a folder yeah i was just sort of thinking like what's the the simplest way to do it uh so i'm gonna show you another trick in zeros so i'm gonna go ahead and create a folder i'm gonna call this the soda and i'm gonna drop everything in there right um you cannot click on this gear icon and copy a folder and if you click on copy it's only going to copy whatever you have selected within that folder but in I, and i have it in here in my custom ui but if you want to move an entire folder with multiple subtools into another tool you can go to the c plugin and there is an awesome plugin that i use all the time for all sorts of things that comes with zbrush as well called the subtool master this one right here so this one has a bunch of uh you know macros and, and scripts that work with um with subtools and here you have this copy folder so i'm going to click on copy folder and as soon as you copy it it just changes to paste so we go to the burger and actually i'm going to create a new folder call it burger I feel funny uh, pronouncing the the name of this fast food because you know like for most of um most of you guys that are for example in America or or learn American English yeah it's burger <laughs> or something like that burger but in Australia it's like a burger <laughs> and you know when I when I speak with my family in Spanish um I can yeah cannot pronounce that <laughs> so anyway this is the uh the burger 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 and let's let's go ahead and click on paste folder and now we have the burger and then we have the soda uh so which is good now we can take this whole thing and we can also scale just the folder by the way so you can click on the gear icon go to transform uh, what is it transpose set so the first one transpose set and series is going to bring in the gizmo enable this thing and it's going to hide everything else but this or kind of like lock it so we can scale like that and it should it shouldn't move with it oh i have the you know what i have the the 
the burger selected, so I'm gonna select this now. Now it makes more sense. There we go. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave it. Oops. I'm gonna keep it in the center just because I if I wanna do poly paint or something, it's gonna be a lot easier to to take advantage of the radial symmetry. Um, all right, so that's roughly it. Um, let's go ahead and add some poly paint so that it matches the the rest of this tool. So this is gonna be I don't know red fill object. This is gonna be white, and this is also gonna be white, and this one as well. Cool. Maybe this is a different color. All right, so let's go ahead and do the fries. Um, I'm gonna clear this a little bit, and we can do that in a different, a uh, different uh, tool. So let's use a cube to start with. Make it a poly mesh 3D. Um, let's see what I can show you with the with the fries. Um, like a cool way to do this. Um, I reckon we can. So I'm gonna hold Control and Shift to select just one side, that one, and I'm gonna delete hidden. All right, so we have a single side mesh uh, facing the camera, so just one side of that cube, and I'm gonna enable symmetry. And here, what I'll do is maybe use the Gizmo 3D and some of the the taper deformers to just get a a shape like this, just so you know what I'm gonna try to do. So from this, we're going to move into a shape that is kind of like this. For like the, the shape of the that the little box where the fries come in. Uh, and then we're going to use some other tools to generate this sort of shape, maybe. I don't know. Um, and then maybe something here at the back like that. So it's going to be. <laughs> I'm sure you, you, you're familiar with what I'm talking about, but uh, we're going to move from this cube to the basic shape first. So again, kind of like blocking it in. I'm going to use the Gizmo 3D and I'm going to use the taper deformer. And even though this is a single sided mesh, it works perfectly fine. So I'm going to do that again, remove that curve. Click on accept and we're going to scale this up a tiny bit. Right. And then the next thing is to just create that sort of curvature, which uh, we can do in uh, in a variety of ways. Um, I suppose the the easiest one would be the clipping brushes, but I think I'm gonna delete some polygons. So, um, so I'm just thinking out loud <laughs> just to show you different techniques. I'm gonna hold Control and Shift, and actually, yeah, Control and Shift, and click on the thumb thumbnail, and I'm gonna go for the slice circle, which is something that we use um, for the the little flaps in the soda, and I'm gonna hold Control and Shift. And to draw this and I can press the space bar and reposition this and this is just gonna slice through the mesh so this is the one that I'm gonna use to do something like that right so it's just gonna slice through that that's fine and then the same thing for the bottom I think this uh, the fries they have this type of shape anyway, <laughs> so um, might not, but whatever. Uh, I'm gonna hold Control and Shift and use the slice curve as well. So it's the same idea, but this time we can just determine where we wanna cut. Press the space bar, and I'm just gonna go for a for something like this on both sides, maybe. Um, I think that works. All right, so I'm gonna do mirror and well, so that we have the the same cuts in both sides, and you know, that also makes the the, the whole cuts that we did with circle symmetrical. Um, and I'm gonna remove whatever I don't need, so I'm gonna select just this polygon, holding Control and Shift, and delete hidden. Um, and I can smooth all of this, and you'll see it's already a pretty clean mesh anyway. Uh, but you know we can run a let's 
just see what happens if I go ahead and run a Siri measure with symmetry. Yeah, I think it gives me a, a pretty good result, but I'm going to undo that uh, just so that I can show you something else. So if with the C modeler, you can go ahead and uh, tweak this. So this one works just fine. But this one here at the top um, could do with a little bit of a little bit of work. So let's go ahead and select the move brush actually. Move that that way. Still single sided. Um, I think that one works there. So I'm just masking so that I, I don't move certain parts. Do that. Um, let's see how we can go about this. I mean, you can you can, you can do this in in a bunch of different ways. I'm just thinking like uh, the the way that I would do it would be just like deleting it and extruding and creating the this whole shape again um, manually. But you know, just to show you different techniques, um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these polygons. Let's see if that works. So delete edge, so I can delete that, one, delete that one. Yeah, delete that edge. Um, delete that one. Mm, nah, I actually want to keep that because when I s smooth this, I need to have this this curve. So. Right click on the dot and I'm going to click on stitch, click on that and click on the next one. So that's probably the, the easiest one. And now we can delete this edge. There we go. That's probably the, the easiest one. Uh, we still have a triangle here, but we can, we can fix that by adding another loop in here and then connecting this one with that. Uh, but I think for what we're doing is totally fine. And smooth it a little bit. All right, yeah. <laughs> I was just thinking about like um, what else I, I could show you, but I think this is just fine. Um, what we need to do now is duplicate this and bridge some of these edges, and you know, continue working from there. Now, one way to do kind of like the thickness and, and complete the, the wrap of this box is taking advantage of the subdivision, right? Um, all of these weird points and, and corners is just because we don't have any any hard edges. So I'm just gonna crease all or crease PG or polygroups that creases all the line like the lines all around it, all of those lines. Um, and then we can take thickness Let's remove this, this smoothness and I'm just going to add this thickness and that creates, uh, you know, if you go a little bit crazy with the thickness, it creates that, that box already, um, which I think is fine. Maybe, yeah, I think the thickness is just fine. And let's go ahead and apply that thickness without subdivision. So uh, I just remove the subdivision of the dynamic subdivision and it's just showing me the thickness. Let's click apply and now we have thickness, we have a, a box really that we can go ahead and, and you know start tweaking. So I'm gonna remove, oops, holding control and shift to select the select lasso, uh, or we can use the C model again and tag what we don't want. So this top area, right click, and we can go ahead and delete those. There we go. And of course, uh, we can add some edge loops here. So I'm gonna insert, insert, multi edge loops. I'm going to go a little bit faster here because I got to go in about 10 minutes. So when I click and drag to add a few more in there and I'm going to remove increase all. Let's see how this looks with dynamics of division and no thickness. Yep, that's not bad. Um, I'm going to go ahead and right click and insert a single edge loop just to sharpen that box there and there. 
and of course we can do it like here and in this point as well and maybe at the top although at the top we don't need it all right so we have the the basic of that box um turn off dynamic now i'm gonna create this kind of like circular shape so uh let's see if i if i can do a, a simple yeah a simple thing so i'm gonna right click on an edge and go to extrude and i have symmetry enabled so i can click and drag and right now i'm extruding the whole uh, edge loop but another kind of like hidden modifier that you can use is the alt key so you can press alt and that way you can extrude only one if you press alt again it goes back to what you had and if you press and hold it only does the partial loop so in other words you can switch between edge edge loop partial or edge loop complete just by uh, holding the alt key which gives you the partial or clicking once to have the full or clicking once again to have only one so i'm just gonna do this one the only one um, actually let's rotate around and make sure perspective is off so i can just do it on that angle on this camera so that it doesn't move around uh, or actually or or another cool thing uh, if you remember if i were to do this click and drag now this is doing it kind of like randomly but if i click and drag the old modifier changes what your target is so alt is to change between edge edge loop or edge loop complete sorry edge edge loop complete and edge loop partial but you can also use the shift which will snap to that sort of like plane so if you press shift it's just going to be uh, kind of like a planner extrusion so this is the one that i'm going to use to do something like that and then i'm going to use the same tool maybe the move brush actually just to move this a bit I just want to change the, the position of these points right and let's do see model again click and drag and Siri is going to snap if you get closer there <laughs> um, let's do the same thing in here snaps and let's use the move brush So I'm just extruding <laughs> to connect this. Um, I'm gonna connect this like this. There we go. So that's gonna be like the shape and then we can fill this in like so, right? Um, this is more like topology tips, but I'm gonna right click on this edge right here and I'm gonna use a stitch. So a stitch will select two points and it's going to stitch them together so i can click on this here and then here in theory oops let's do it again click here and here and that sort of like stitch that up and then right click and extrude again and it's gonna yeah connect there and now we can just go ahead and use the smooth brush just to smooth this uh or you know the move brush as well just to reposition some of these points and this is why it's important or at least I think it's important to um, to work with low poly meshes. At least if you're doing some something a bit more stylized, I think um, you can have a look at you know what uh, Shane Olson or or Polygon um, you know that stream here in the Pixelogy channel um, do. So they're pretty awesome as like at working in low res meshes to control the surfaces. So that's kind of like the idea behind uh, this. So we have the box <laughs> of the fries. Let's use dynamic. Um, actually, let's push this one up a bit um, because I'm going to use the C modeler one more time and maybe insert a line in here just to make sure that border is sharp enough and this one as well. All right, and let's use the dynamic subdivision and this time we're going to use thickness turn off that so that's the thickness of the box which is looking good i'm going to change the offset to outside so there is no weird corners because again 
in when you have like a 90 degree angle like in this case if you have the offset at zero you will see this uh, overlapping artifact um, again that's just because we are offsetting things um, i did mention this before so if you have an angle of like 90 degrees in here when you have the offset at zero zero is going to add thickness in both sides so the outer edge will be fine but when you do something like this series is going to extrude let's say this face and this face like that so there's going to be an intersection in here and you get artifacts um, so just be aware of that so i'm going to push the offset to zero so it's only ex extruding it in one um, area or in one direction and I don't want this to be as sharp, so I'm going to remove the post of division. But if it is too soft, this is another thing I can show you. Um, if you turn off this post of division, right, which is what we use for the for the lid of the soda, um, to soften this, you can actually determine how sharp this is by adding multiple edge loops in between, and that's what the segments are. So you can add two or three, and that basically gives you control over the thickness oh sorry over the sharpness of that end of the thickness so i'm just going to add a couple more there and you can also you know apply the thickness and do that manually by adding edge loops with the c modeler as well um all right so let's do one final tweak with the gizmo 3d turn off symmetry bring in the taper deformer i use a taper for a lot of things um, and this is like too perfect right so i just want to also do a tiny bit of tapering that way so something like this maybe not that much right um, and that looks great because then you have it's not perfect you can have this sort of like tapering effect maybe from the bottom as well it's just another trick to give you less fries <laughs> from i suppose um, and if you want you can also have like a little bit of um again not a straight not a straight thing ah, i think it's fine um, anyway, it looks great from this angle, but when you turn around, obviously you are applying that taper to both of those axes. So it's, it's on one side is fine, and the other one is um, it's not good. So these other controllers that you have here at the top, these opacities, uh, allows you to control the effect of this tapering based on the axis. So I have the, the taper effect right now, uh, you know, in the way that I want it to, which is like that. And that is the z axis but i don't want to be affecting the the x axis so i just rotate around take that controller and reduce that to zero so we go back to the shape that we liked from this angle but we also have the taper on this side as well and now that i can see it uh, maybe it's a little bit too much <laughs> all right and then we can click on the gear icon accept um, and i think we can just get this closer All right, and because it is a, a very low poly, remember we just have the dynamic on. We can do things uh, to to fine tune the shape a little bit. Um, you know, we can use the move brush. If you if you want to be precise, you can use more deformers or um, you can inflate things. But I'm just gonna use the move brush just to push this and. Add a little bit of uh, curvature. Eh, it's not very controlled, so <laughs> you can you can also uh, use the taper deformer this way just to show you. Um, so I gotta go now, but you can use the taper deformer this way and this way just to to round it a little bit. Uh, if you hold the shift key, you snap to integer numbers, so you can do something like that. And again, you can remove, let's say, not in the y-axis. To remove that um, that effect but I think it's just fine as it is and then you can do the same thing um, the other way so let's accept that and add a, another taper so this way and this way just to get that curvature in here and then you just remove um, this <laughs> this effect <laughs> in here and the Y one uh, hang on which one I'm I'm I messed up. There was one that shouldn't be control. Oh, sorry, it's this one. 
anyway <laughs> just playing around with the controls i forgot which one i was uh, trying to do um all right so that's that's the box maybe bring this closer and let's go ahead and just paint it with another color and in fact uh, i'm just going to go ahead and remove the subdivision the uh, the dynamic subdivision sorry and i'm going to apply the thickness so i'm going to click uh, apply sorry and then i'm going to add another dynamic i'm going to remove the thickness and i'm just going to control the, the thickness uh, and that way we can just go ahead and select let's say this polygroup control and shift so basically selecting the the inside right and we can fill it with a different color right so the inside is a different color um you know just to show you different things and then we can go ahead and add a bunch of fries which i'm gonna do extremely quick <laughs> i'm gonna uh, just duplicate that and turn it into a q cube scale it this axis so this is the fry and i have dynamic subdivision i'm going to use the c modeler right click on this edge loop and actually i'm going to click on insert edge loop multi multi edge loops click and drag add a couple add a couple there so that's the fry and you can use dynamic if you want to uh, what i'll do is i'm just going to make it a little bit more organic so add a bit of curvature here with the with the arc there we go uh, let's just fill it with a nice greasy color and from the top I'm just gonna do this hold control click and drag that will duplicate that fry I'm just gonna change the or variate the, the size a little bit control click and drag From the top uh, remove the mask and then control click and drag and now that I have this sort of like block of three I can just variate things a little bit more control click and drag like that um, just paying attention to those intersections control click and drag So yeah, they're intersecting a little bit, but doesn't matter. Control, click and drag. All right, and now I can go ahead and do auto groups so every single fry is a different group and we can just fine tune like you know when when there is overlapping or, or something like this um, I'm gonna hold control and shift to isolate mask that one and I'm gonna I'm gonna use one at a time to sort of hold control and rotate that one around and this is just to to move away from that sort of duplication and make sure this uh is not as as manufactured that that effect all right and then just tweak those things a little bit again because everything every single fry is a separate mesh uh, we can go with the move topological and start like you know pushing things like that and make them a little bit fatter uh, in fact this uh, I'm gonna show you something else that is quite cool so in solo mode I'm gonna apply the subdivision um, so that we have plenty of you know subdivision um, I'm gonna go to the surface noise click on surface noise and I'm gonna remove um yeah let's remove the color i want to scale that noise quite a bit for the fries change the intensity a bit something like that click ok 
So obviously this doesn't look great, uh, but if we apply the surface noise to the mesh at a lower subdivision level, we're gonna get that nice sort of variation. So like at level two, let's click on apply to mesh, and then we go higher, and we have that sort of like squiggly line, uh, which is pretty cool. All right, we have the fries, and let's go ahead and, um, you know, we can put them into another folder just to repeat that. Let's call them fries. Put that in there. Um, just gonna copy folder. Go to this area and again to the C plugin. Click on paste. And now we have the fries. Yeah. All right. So all we have left is just to organize this a little bit in in terms of setting up the the scene. We have, let's do that quickly. We have a burger, we have the fries. And we can have a soda as well. Cool. And maybe actually, let's go to the fries. I'm gonna select, isolate that one. Oops. Click on that. And hold control. In, oops, control. Invert that. Centered, hold control. Oh, I have subdivision, so I cannot duplicate it. But anyway, you can just scatter some in the, like around the floor. And that's it. Uh, let's do get closer. And that's, that's about it. All right, so hopefully you guys have found this uh, useful. Again, it's just to try to show you a bunch of different um, tools or a bunch of different techniques, uh, especially with the C model, because I know it's something, it's an incredibly powerful tool, but uh, it's kind of like hard to get used to it. But once you get used to it, it's, uh, you, know, you know, all of those things that I showed you, I'm, I'm quite comfortable creating these sort of things very easily with the C model. I don't have to jump to any other software to do it. I can do everything um, that I just show you within ZBrush, which is pretty cool. Um, alrighty, so I'm gonna leave it here, guys, because I got a rush now. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we'll see you in a couple of weeks, and we can start an another project. I think I'm gonna leave this one as it is. We we have everything we need for a a quick, fast, uh, fast food meal, um, or healthy food delivered faster. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm going to leave it here, guys, and I will see you in a couple of weeks. For those of you who are interested in the Extra Mile uh, course that I have in uh, online, um, I'm planning to open it in a, in a few weeks. So if you're part of my email list, you will receive a, a series of emails just showing you like or letting you know that it's going to be opening. Um, but this time I'm like super, super under the pump with other projects that I've been working on. Uh, so I, I would only be able to open it. Uh, the enrollment for like about five days so um, if you're interested make sure that you keep an eye on your email if you're part of the email list otherwise go to the 3d concept artist or serious guides and and subscribe and i'll uh, be able to to let you know when when it opens Alrighty, thank you so much guys for tuning in and i'll see you next time